the tales of the Greats. I'm Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where we take off all of our skin. It's just, yeah. it's just what we do, Gary. It's, it's how we how we do I it know. over here. Everything hurts. Yeah. Just rolling around, like laying down in the mm-hmm. bed, and it's like, ah, I got bed in my muscles. Yeah. Ow. Happy Mardi Gras. We're, uh, yeah, hello, yeah. Yeah, it's Mardi Gras is this weekend. Uh, we're recording pretty early, so this will go out when it is definitely not Mardi Gras. Uh, I will be uh, observing so Lent. So there's got to be Mardi Gras somewhere. No, that's not, that's not true. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not the way that works. <laughs> they are, some other southern, like, coastal towns are starting to adopt Mardi Gras. Like, you can go to, like, Gulf Shores, Mississippi, and you do Mardi Gras now. And I, I can't decide hmm. if I think that that's, like, good for them for tourism or bad because it's, like, cultural appropriation, but also, like... Like most of the people that celebrate Mardi Gras in New Orleans is, aren't like you know <laughs> observing the heritage. It's just an excuse to get drunk. So who cares? Yeah, it's it's like St. Patrick's Day, but yeah. a month before St. Patrick's Day. Exactly. Yeah, it's an excuse to you get know? drunk so you can recover by the time St. Patrick get, comes around, so you can get drunk again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that party hound, the legendary party hound, St. Patrick. How are you doing, Gary? Yeah, I uh, I'm doing all right. I found out recently that we have a Mardi Gras, uh, some kind of parade or something up here. Oh, that's cool. Like we don't celebrate Mardi Gras, but there's some kind of observance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just found that out. Not going to it. Didn't find out about it till too late, but it, it's a, it's a parade and, and live wanted to go. And one of the, uh, Liv and I are incredibly simpatico, but one thing is that, uh, I recognize that I think parades are incredibly fucking boring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. it's kind of like a museum that walks by you really slowly, but yep. it, it's a really bad museum. Mm-hmm. You know, ninety uh, percent. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, like I, I can imagine it being fun if you're drunk, and like a Mardi Gras parade in New Orleans is a party. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of parades, though, it's it's like Girl Scout troop. You know, seven forty two, and they just walk. Yeah. You know, there, there's nothing, they're not doing tricks or anything. They're just waving. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Waving. And it's like, I can wave. I can see waving at home for free. Um, just, just want, give, just give want everybody at home to know that Gary Butterfield is disappointed that the Girl Scouts aren't doing tricks in the parade. Just want to, yeah, just want to make sure we're saying that. Cookies or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I can, I can, I can, with a, with a, a short, like with a camera and a mirror, I could wave myself all day long. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're, we're not going to that. That's the, that's the, end. she's just like, Hey, we should go to this sometime. I'm like, yeah, I'll go sometime. I'll, I'll give it a try because of, of love and marriage. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I should, I should let you know, I've never been to a parade that was worth watching. It's in interesting. Uh, the thing that will ruin parades for you pretty quickly is being in one, uh, because being mm-hmm. in a parade fucking rules every single time. It is amazing. It's an incredible experience because you're walking around and everybody's looking at you and you don't have to look at mm. any of the other floats. <laughs> like it's, you're just <laughs> looking at the people and you're the, taking a stroll and the people you know, are it's, begging it's you. They just want those fucking beats so bad, Gary. They're like, yeah. give me please. I just want them so bad. And then you throw them at them and then they don't catch them and they hit the ground and they become worthless. It's really weird. to come. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> people lose their minds yeah. like everyone's screaming it's just yeah it's a big celebration of yelling humanity uh watching them is just standing yes you know, I, yeah. I, I don't care for that part but the uh yeah instead we're going to a uh the wizard world got rebranded so we're going to a comic con this weekend oh cool yeah speaking of comics it's fun uh which we talk about sometimes on the show we do. Uh, specifically, yeah. Uncanny X-Force. We are, we're kind of in the middle of a bunch of crazy shit happening. The, the Brotherhood of Evil has reunited. Mm-hmm. That's scary. And, yeah, and it's all the kind of villains from this arc. This is uh, Remender wrapping up his X-Force run. Yeah. You know, this is the climax. All the, all the bits are coming together. I, I read ahead because it was impossible not to, you know, because we're right at the end. We've mm-hmm. only got a couple more episodes of this uh, covering this on this podcast left. Uh, so I read ahead and yeah, I like the ending of this book still. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think it's, I think it's really good yeah. too. Um, and I, I like these four issues that we're covering today. Like it's, they're just good fun. Um, and then like when we start going into the doing future shenanigans, that, that's just, that's my shit. That's X-Men shit, dude. I'm, I'm yeah. so excited. So I'm, I'm way, I'm way into it. It's, it's funny how dumb and partisan I am. Cause, uh, we, we were talking a little bit about that flash trailer yeah. and they're just doing multiverse, <laughs> you know, stuff there. And I'm like, fuck this. The flash is in it. <laughs> But if like an X Man is in it, yeah, a hundred percent, all in. It doesn't make any sense. Like Uncanny X Force could do six alternate realities over the course of thirty five issues, and every single time I'm like, yes, yes, give me this shit. And then as soon as the Flash is running to unmake reality, 
I'm like, that's stupid. He does it by running. Yeah, yeah. That's so stupid. It's, it's and I, really I just like, immediately <laughs> turn into like a jock. Like I want to bully him. I will say, um, uh, like the 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 idea that, that you can run so fast that you go back in time, I think, has always been dumb. Like I've just, it's part of my my problem with DC in general. I think, and the reason I was never a DC fan. Um, and it, this is me being totally unfair, by the way. Like this is not me being objective at all. But like the the reason it, it just, I just look at a lot of those guys and go like, that's corny that is so yeah. fucking corny like this is the you are all just corny and then once you start getting into like the multiversal like, stuff over there i'm just i just start checking out like i, I, I don't yeah. i don't care a cr- i can't handle a crisis the I only uh, a crisis the only time i ever liked that was that one issue of um oh fuck what was the warren ellis comic um planetary planetary yeah, yeah where, where it popped over the different batman yeah yeah that's <laughs> that real was fun. that was really fun but that was also yeah. you know one issue out of a 40 issue <laughs> that didn't involve batman so yeah it was in a year of like comics where you have to read all of them and then at the end everything just resets yeah you know mm-hmm. it's like well I, I guess this is what batman is now you know um, batman killed his parents who cares <laughs> Speaking of comic book movies, yeah. where uh, I feel like after we kept say, we keep saying we need to do an MCU catch up, uh, but I feel like after Quantum Mania, after you, you managed to to get that one down, we should we should jump on it because uh, man, I just I was watching the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy three and just like that's just going to be it looks like they just want to make people cry about the fucking raccoon like every time I, that's the only yeah. vibe i get out of it like it doesn't look fun or exciting it just looks like people are having a terrible time and i just i'm like man can you just like make these movies fun like i mean can they just end on a positive note like can this team just like hang out shake hands and be like see you on the other universe <laughs> like do they have to I, die and be sad about it all the time yeah i i'm uh i don't think that trailer looks pretty good particularly good i'm in a weird spot with with that because i i'm like the one person on earth who is pretty lukewarm on the first Mm -hmm. guardian like i which was all like fun you know like the trailer was just like we're gonna make them you know we're gonna be a 80s star wars movie uh and i don't i don't like that one very much i like the second one a lot which looked basically the same like was trying to be fun and had fun in it but i like it was the right balance for me Mm -hmm. this one i i don't know what to i don't have any particular affection for guardians of the galaxy as like a property I have no idea what it's going to do. Yeah. Way more. Vaguely curious because they're, they're wrapping it up. Like it's, it's interesting. They're running into like a, um, attention. Cause in the comics, like you can just always have a guardians of the galaxy. Like you can have a run wrap up. Like right now we're wrapping up X force on, on this podcast. It doesn't mean X force is going away. We're just doing this chapter. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. uh, in the MCU, it's fucking wild that there will be three guardians of the galaxy movies. <laughs> You know, that's, it's such a my, like, you know, minor part of the, the whole comics experience. And it, it's like it, it they don't know how to do it. Like it this doesn't make sense for this to end. You know, so we have to have to end in a big climactic way, like, say, a movie would not just kind of be an ellipsis like a comic would. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it is, you um, know, thinking about yeah. the MCU, it's if, if you told me in 2000, what was it like five or six when I, the first Iron Man movie came out that by 20 years later we'd have three guardians of the galaxy movies and zero x-men movies since that in that universe i would have called you a <laughs> fucking insane person like no fantastic <laughs> four no sense. x-men i mean what the fuck what are they doing i would have asked yeah. <laughs> 20 20 year older jeremy how is your hair look so no good sense. what are you doing do i need to do something now <laughs> like i think to, do i need to start protecting this yeah uh, anyway. yeah you, you know uh the the red guardian is gonna get us highlight movie <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, before Wolverine does, just FYI, <laughs> you know, just, oh, 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 the re- um, the red who two thousand five yeah. Jeremy would have asked, what are you, what are you yeah. talking about? No clue. Yeah, the High Evolutionary is going to get a movie before, uh, you know, before Magneto does. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. I watched uh, we when we do that wrap up. I watched Werewolf by Night, which I liked. Mm-hmm. That's pretty fun. Um, I still got to watch Miss Marvel. I still got to watch Wakanda forever. I might do some this weekend, though, because uh, wife's out of town hanging out with some friends for part of the weekend. Excellent. Might be a little time for me to do some takeout and uh, watch Wakanda forever and see what Namor is about. Dude, I I, uh, yeah. I was like, I'm going to get a little bit high on a Saturday morning. I'm going to drink some coffee. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite activities to do on a Saturday morning. I'm going to put on this movie and I'm going to watch Wakanda forever. Uh, and like three hours later, I had finished watching Wakanda forever. And I was like, well... That was a waste of getting high and drinking coffee. I could have just done that any old time. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. I don't even think the movie's yeah. very, I don't think it's bad or anything. I just, it wasn't the Saturday morning experience that I was looking for. So yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta be better than Eternals. Like that took me like several sittings to watch. I don't know. Let's talk about right? X Force because Reassure me. <laughs> I was I was uh, I don't want to I I don't want to think about that too hard. If you make me do a a, a ranking, I might. Oh no! Damn! I, this Let is me... chapter three of the final execution. Yes. What What happened last time? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you blew it's me away a, with this uh, Wakanda Forever Eternal com- comparison. I'm just sitting here thinking, which one is better? <laughs> <laughs> damn it short-circuited things the uh the team the team's fucked up the team is basically broken up psylocke has quit wolverine and nightcrawler went to a place where uh following deadpool where they designed superhumans ran to the omega clan mm-hmm. uh and then a uh a clone or not clone mystique dressed up as psylocke went and seduced phantom x yes uh, for the specific point of poisoning him uh we should note that deadpool does not have his healing powers anymore yes. uh, that happened in a totally different arc but we just have to deal with it over here too uh and the cover of this is very cool like a red sky background with our brotherhood of evil um most of them we've got you know the blob from the apocalypse world mystique saber uh in sabador aka the shadow king <laughs> and then the the skinless man who has wrapped all of his muscle tentacles uh around phantom x in front of him choking him uh Yep, choking looks, him out. Looks very cool. Bad things for our team. Yep. Uh, we we cut to a rooftop fight with Phantom X and Mystique right after uh, having sex. And there there's good, you know, jokey jokes in this, you know. It's immediately Phantom X, you know, you make love nothing like Betsy. She's like, well, you continued. I didn't say it was bad. You know? <laughs> I'm still having <laughs> fun. Like, yeah. It was fine. I imagine Mystique would be a good, you know, would be a good partner. Yeah. She's been around for a very long time. Yeah. yeah, and she just seems like a, a person that um, probably knows herself really well, and it's be very expressive yeah. in the bedroom. Like, hey, this is what knows I need exactly you to do. What she likes. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the uh, she reveals basically like, listen, while you we were doing this, I poisoned you. Um, I had to get close to you, and this has turned off your mutant power. Yep. That's why you can't misdirect me. And she mentions that these are this is to uh, our purpose. The reason they're doing this is our hour on. And he's like, hour? They're like, I thought this was just you. Um, and yeah. they get separated because uh, she, he throws her through a skylight window in front of like two people who were just like probably watching the Bake Off having a great night up until now. Um, and that's that- their, their, their couch faces their fireplace, not their TV. Oh, they were just watching a fire. They're just watching a fire, getting snuggly. Wow, yeah. that's even worse. Yeah. And then a, a half naked yeah. blue woman comes through your skylight, and the only thing you think is <laughs> that was a two thousand dollars skylight. It's going to be a five thousand <laughs> skylight to repair. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So this gets Mystique gets away. Yes. At this point, she just walks out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cut over to weirdly out of character Quentin Choir, uh, trying to taunt uh, Genesis into being Apocalypse. Yes. For some reason um I what an asshole i kind of i kind of wanted this to be i kept expecting this the first time i'm reading it uh to be um the shadow king somehow getting into apocalypse's mind as, as opposed to quentin well, choir um yeah or, or or quentin choir up to some shit or or that yeah and, or him just having yeah, agency like him, yeah. him collaborating with them or something like having a motivation at all for this <laughs> exactly <laughs> just <know>? some, just, <laughs> just are looking for a reason can you give me any of those just a simple yeah. reason um, and while he's in the middle of haranguing Genesis, uh, Sabretooth comes uh, out of just nowhere, knocks his ass straight out, uh, and is like, "Hey, Kid Apocalypse! Like, we need to we need to get out of here." And that's where they run into uh, Kid Gladiator, um, who, yeah. who we know pretty well. And Kid Gladiator is gonna gonna take out Sabretooth until the Blob just fucking sits on him. Uh, yeah, his classic move, classic uh, Krakum move, and. Yeah uh G- genesis isn't stupid like he's he's been trained by uncle cluster and he knows this is the time to run and to pick your battles so he he gets the fuck out of there yep uh as he's doing he starts hearing a voice this is Sabretooth following because Sabretooth can stalk a kid you know uh saying like they've been lying to you this whole time you have the power to change the world they're not your friends if they've just been lying to you you know you need better teachers and he knocks him out yep. uh they're gonna get him uh Beast shows up with Kitty Pride uh, to see this, you know, and they they realize Evan's missing uh, here. Kid Gladiator and Kid Omega were not able to stop him. Beast just yelling at a child. Where is the other child I am responsible for? Yeah. 
<laughs> body system. <laughs> um, the uh, it, it's a uh, and the you know, <laughs> Quentin Quire even while he's, he's missing. Like, why do they want him? He's like the same reason we don't. He's the po- He's apocalypse. Good fucking riddance. I hate this guy. Um, and then don't quite understand it. Yeah, but, unfortunately, we don't have to deal with that very much. Um, we switch back over to uh, um, Phantom X. Eva. Uh, Eva, yeah, Eva and Phantom, who is like, you know, this has to be a trap. Like she d- d- mystique let the slip about this this particular room that was reserved uh, um, at this hotel, and this is probably a trap. But like, I still have to do this anyway, even though I don't have a healing factor right now uh, because I've been poisoned. Uh, and when he jumps through the window, uh, who is there waiting for him? But the Shadow King, uh, Farouk. Uh, just just having a seat, drinking a martini. I love this dude. I love uh, this guy. Yeah, it's so great. good. Like it does again uh, the rehabilitative factor of this run of making people who I previously thought were super lame pretty cool. And uh, you know? Farouk has been waiting. Uh, Psylocke is here, and he was disappointed to find uh, not the warrior that, that he experienced that that originally trapped him to get revenge on, but a, a broken little girl who had been betrayed. And he tells Phantom X like go into the bathroom, and she is just in the bathtub like completely broken down. Um, yeah, we should mention, I, I don't remember exactly which issue it is, but we should probably just put a general warning that there's some like suicide ideation and some actual suicide stuff. And if that's something that's triggering for anybody, you should probably watch out because we're going to be talking about it a little bit. This, yeah. this seems there, like there a good time. That in this, book. this seems like a good time to mention that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, probably, probably a good idea. Uh, Phantom X is trying to, to save her. You know, she's been hit with all of the guilt. Like she keeps saying, I killed him. I killed him and things. Um, she can't quite recognize him as he's trying to get her out. The skinless man comes and grabs uh, his neck, stabs, you know, with his tentacles, smashes in the wall. And again, he does not heal. Yes. Uh, anymore. Uh, it's really no good. Um, he's taunting him. You know, you're just trying to turn her against her own people. They're doing their mind games. You know, you, you're the mutant killer. You're sublimes plan. You're from the weapon plus, you know, the apex of this. You've all you've done is cause her pain. You know, yep. this whole time. And, uh, and Phantom X is able to turn this around. And for all the world, it looks like he shoves this dude in the bathtub. And excuse me, shoves this dude in the toilet and it shoots him in the toilet. And it shoots him in the back. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. <laughs> rough, rough, <laughs> rough way to go, if you're asking me. Yeah. It's like going to sleep. <laughs> is it? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> is I've it? heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phantom X uh, is trying to get, you know, Psylocke to recognize him. And he has to take off his mask, yeah, you she... know, uh, and put it on her because it has the side dampening plates. Yeah, you know, the idea being this will get a uh, Shadow King out of her head and protect her long enough for us to leave. And it instantly happens. Like as they walk into the room, he's like, "I'm going to." He's immediately shoot uh, the Shadow King, but the Shadow King's not even there, uh, and he manages to get Psylocke out of the room um, and into Eva before he gets taken again by the, the skinless man and drugged back into this room. Um, so yay. The, the way he tried to stop shadow King from getting him was switching back and forth between his brains. Yeah. Uh, but it did not quite work. You know, worked, uh, just briefly, just long enough. I love this next scene. Um, only because in the first panel, uh, it's, it's just the shadow King just sitting there like with this just huge grin on his face. Like I, have been waiting to see some fucked up shit. And this is going to be some incredibly fucked up shit. <laughs> Almost every picture of the shadow King's face in this book would make a great icon, like a Twitter <laughs> icon. Like, hey, all right. Uh, like, it's the same face. It's yeah. that same, um, like anime sickos face where it's kind of looking through the window or whatever. Just like, it's that like, yeah. Oh man, I am excited about what it's, what is about to happen. And it's just the skinless man. Like he's, he's, he's got a knife. He's got uh, Phantom X in front of him finally, and he is going to cut out his heart uh, all the while as he's talking to Phantom X that he's saying, you know, I'm going to take this child that you were trying to rehabilitate in Genesis, and I'm going to turn him into Apocalypse, and he is going to kill billions of people. Um, Yeah. And Phantom X, for his part, is just saying, like, accept this. This can only happen. You can only die once. Like, just feel the peace of the moment. And sure enough, he tears his heart out, and Phantom X collapses. And Phantom X is yeah. presumably dead at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's no good. Bad times for our heroes. You know? Uh, Psylocke is inside Eva, flying away, and he, she's saying, go back. We have to help him. Eva's saying, we can't do that. You know, you have to live. This would have made his sacrifice worthless. You know, you have to find his killers. Mm-hmm. 
and get revenge you know on it that's what we have to do and eva is dying uh now that phantom x is dead she can barely make it yep uh and she crashes and we get the kind of this like uh scene from far away um where Psylocke has to jump out so that she doesn't crash with Eva. Uh, and we see this from far away from uh, Gateway's view as he's just, you know, doing gateway things, which is sitting basically naked in the desert somewhere. Um, yes, and, hanging out. And we see uh, Psylocke jump out. We see Eva continue to fly, crash, huge explosion on the ground. Uh, gateway comes over and helps Psylocke up. And when they turn around, um, there's danger no, I'm sorry. Uh, there's yes. <laughs> there's a different robot lady with that, that was made to look hot for some reason that looks exactly <laughs> like better Danger. Design. Like D- D- Danger has all those weird tentacles and shit coming off of her. True. Yeah. And the weird head. Like this mm-hmm. just looks like a, a sex like a sex bot, which is still weird. But I like that uh, we know that this can happen because of the last arc of the Grant Morrison. Yeah. X Men where it's in the future, there is the Eva bot uh, thing. So like it's it's again really cool that to me Rick Remender is taking things from Grant Morrison's new X Men and following up on them. Yeah, absolutely. Like a lot in this run, mm-hmm. um, which had been ignored, you know. Uh, and she comes out, she's, do not despair. This is just the next stage. You know, uh, death is not the end of this. Um, they go back to X Force where Nightcrawler, Deadpool, and Wolverine have just been hanging out. Yeah, they've just been chilling, uh, just <laughs> like recovering. <laughs> um they are wolverine immediately goes for betsy um uh, deadpool is like who is the sexy robot uh and before yeah. they can really do anything uh they're interrupted by none other than wolverine's son everybody's favorite two clawed individual dokken uh he's got a third claw that comes out through the bottom it may i hate dakin <laughs> the design is so stupid is it dakin like, is it really dakin I, I, I always, i've never i don't pr- know what i I don't know which one it is. I've heard Dakin, uh, the po- other comics podcast I listen to calls him Dakin. Okay. It's spelled Dakin, but I hear always say Dakin because they say it that way. Dakin makes this dude like 40% worse in my mind. Like at least, yeah, da- at least Dakin Neeson's is like, Dakin. or like, like a, has yeah. a, has a neat, I guess there's no accent on the A. So, so you, you gotta go just like Dakin, like bacon, but I guess, yeah, boy, Dakin, uh, don't, I- I, I don't know why, but I, I, I can say I have never been able to gel with Wolverine's shitty kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. the death of Wolverine arc, he has a bunch of weird shitty kids. Like one that like throws juggling balls with his feet and stuff. Those Wolverine shitty kids I can kind of get along with, <laughs> but this version of, of Wolverine shitty kids, like I like Laura, I like X 23. It's Wolverine's good kid. Uh, Wolverine's pheromone shooting son i'm not super into <laughs> you know i uh i feel like you and i are two people that um were that had some dad issues and have mostly resolved our dad issues so now when we see a kid like this that has dad issues that just won't let them go we're like get over it what's your problem <laughs> go rob yeah. a bank you fucking weirdo why are you enacting revenge on your father like this is just boring <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> i I, d- I do get like that. Like the idea, like just like, oh, you, you I got over this when I was 16, my man. Yeah. Like th- this, yeah, this took me four years. Uh, how can you still be going through this after like 30? You know, and same thing with media. Like I, I remember it was one of the things that kept me at arm's length with Hades. You know, where I was just like, why are you putting up with this, man? <laughs> you should, that fucking sucks. Just yeah, go yeah. to a different, like, you don't, family doesn't mean this. Beat just feet. Go. Beat feet. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Just leave. Yeah. Hit the bricks. Hit the bricks. If, if fam, family it sucks, <laughs> hit the bricks. You know? We were, um, uh, if, you know. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, if I were, if I were Doc and Dakin, uh, I would do anything else other than this. anything. I would go form a yeah. punk rock band and play it with my claws. Like that would be the cool, like yeah. you'd be, you'd be huge on TikTok if you were playing guitars with your fucking mutant claws. Right. Like that would be amazing, yeah. but no, absolutely not well, too much. And D- Doc and Dakin, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> Dirk and Doc and Dakin, we're the fucking Dakin, offspring Dakin, song Dakin. right at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you, I think he canonically like gets some. Like he's, he's canonically super hot and, and is, you know, constantly drowning in, in lovers, Mm -hmm. both male and, and female lovers. Like, I don't know. I would not spend my time doing this stuff with Wolverine and would instead just like play guitar in a band, eat delicious food and just sample, you know, the world's lovers. What's up with the, sample the genitals of the world? What's up with the wrecking crew? <laughs> they need a new member. Like yeah. go, go this work it, dude. Like you're you're a villain. Like yeah. embrace it or you not. Do anything. Yeah, you can do literally yeah. anything. I, I, I the thing is, I wouldn't. I like it doesn't seem that fun. Yeah. You know, 
uh, he he's basically saying like, hey, now that Phantom X is gone, Automaton is reverting back to his normal programming of killing mutants. Automaton kills Gateway, cracks his neck. Uh, rip. Bummer for Gateway. And yep, poor Gateway. Uh, they they're getting rid of Phantom X's misdirection powers and Gateway. They're getting rid of their uh, Deus Ex Machinas one by one. Yes. In this book. Uh, and Automaton's going to blow up the mountain. Yep. Uh, and he does. He blows up the base. Big yeah. mushroom cloud. And the last scene of this is just, uh, once again, <laughs> fucking Shadow King just like, yeah, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I love you this just group. Watch, watch These are my homeboys. After this, he's going to pay-per-view plane. Yes, absolutely. And just be like, oh, it's that movie about the plane. <laughs> What was the, um, what's the movie where they have sex and crash cars? Like, I feel like that's the Shadow King's next rental oh, at this point. Crash. Crash? Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah. For some reason, my brain kept um, spitting out Traffic as the name of that movie, and that didn't sound right. <laughs> that's, that's a different, different movie. Different movie. Uh, yeah, we, we get our crew of fucked up dudes. Yep. Uh, here. You know, all just watching the monitor on the, uh, the big board here. Uh, and Doc and Dakin is telling Genesis, like, See, this is what happens when you're a good guy. Yeah. You know, your friends are telling you this is the way, but the, the bad guy way is the way to live. You don't get blown up. And then um, that's it for this issue. And we're going to go to number 28, um, which has an extremely cool cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're in, the, we're in the cover zone. Like, awesome covers. All the, you know, the team uh, crouching down, the remaining team, uh, in some kind of future scape. Plus death we're going back to future shit. Plus Deathlock, yeah, which is kind yeah. of our first clue that something weird is going on. Um, and we we start out thirty seconds previous to the ending, uh, where Psylocke has this realization of what's about to happen that Ultimaton is about to explode. So seeing uh, Gateway on the ground uh, forcibly enters his mind and prolongs his life uh, artificially so that she can, they can he she can like basically manually use his power to teleport them anywhere. Um, and I like this idea of you and I have talked about this a lot of like mutants having to practice their powers to get good at them. And I think mm-hmm. I always really appreciate when like ice man gets better at doing ice stuff as, as, as the mm-hmm. run progresses. So I like just going like <laughs> squeezing the gateway gene, right. And going like teleport <laughs> and like not having any <laughs> idea where she's going. It's very, very good for me. I like that a lot. Yeah. And yeah, she doesn't know what she's doing and she only has fractions of a second, you know? They just need to get out. And where, where he sent them was the future. Uh, where Deathlock is there. It says, basically, welcome to the future, X, X-Force. Right on time. You know, you were supposed to be here. We have to go. Yeah. You know, basically. Like, we have to get out of here. Uh, as they're kind of explaining things with their thoughts, Deadpool fucks it up. Like, they're, they're all basically, you know, what happened? Oh, I had Gateway teleport us out. Deadpool is, uh, you know. Are we doing that telepathic talking thing so Deathlock can't hear us? And then he thinks, oh, wait, did I say that? Yeah, it's cute. It's very funny. Um, Deathlock is uh, like, hey, you're 30 years in the future. Uh, I need to show you some stuff. And then um, there, there's other people hunting us. We get, we have to go. Uh, and Betsy can't get into his brain, so we have really no idea if he's telling the truth. So this is like the default thing of just, hey, we, we got to follow this guy for a little while. Um, and then we have this like huge spread of the three people that are hunting them, which is Cable, Hope, and Future Dead. Or excuse me, not Cable, Frank Castle, Hope, and Deadpool. Yes, uh, Punisher from Rick Remender's Punisher run. He's bringing in the people he likes. Yep. You know, uh, Future Punisher. Have you read that? I didn't. Uh, I guess I didn't know that he wrote yeah. a Punisher run. Is is it good? Yeah, it's great. Okay, huh. it's it's super good. It it it's what leads into the incredibly bonkers and fun Franken Castle. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember which is yeah. exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Perfect. <laughs> yeah, not a pun or anything. <laughs> like I mean, it's kind of like Frank Castle, Franken Castle, but yeah, it's a uh, it's. There's really no reason for Punisher to turn into a Frankenstein, other than that it kind of owns. Other, other than it's so. just kind of a the dumbest idea you can come up with and make cool. <laughs> so. It, uh, it begins with a really good premise. It, it starts right out of um, Dark Reign, like right after Secret Invasion. And just with the, the idea, like Punisher would not suffer the Green Goblin to be, you know, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ah, gotcha. Like, you Jeez. know, how is he, you know, he would do everything he can to stop that. Like, he'd be the one person who would not go along with it, you know, out of that crew. Um, yeah, it's good. <clears throat> I like- I've been, the only thing I still have to read by him that's a, like a Marvel thing is I need to read uh, Axis, which is the climax of uncanny avengers and then his um venom run uh, a, and then i'll have read all the remender marvel stuff 
Do you see that Venom uh, Midnight Suns trailer, by the way? Oh, I didn't. There's a. No. I think that, I think that's out now. Like I think that when I watched the trailer, it was like available now, Ooh. and I was like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> They're really spitting that DLC out pretty quick. So one more DLC, and I'll dive back in. Yeah. Uh, well, there's two, yeah. right? There's or Storm two more. and oh, yeah, well, and Orban. <laughs> Doctor Michael Michael Morbius. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> two two characters alike in, in dignity. I uh, I desperately right. desperately love the hot pink and black aesthetic of these uh, flying hover hover cycle things uh, in this comic book. I love love it. I I love it, and I also love that it's to a purpose. Yeah, or like not to a purpose, but there's a cause, right? Like the mm-hmm. the architect of this future. These are her colors. Yeah, <laughs> and it's very fun. I guess it is more of a purple yeah. than a hot pink, but yeah. Um, I bought a shirt recently that's black and hot pink, and I've worn it four times, and every single time people have been like, dude, you look good today. And I'm like, is pink my color? Should I just be one of those yeah, guys? It's, <laughs> okay. Dude, this is my shirt. I, the idea of assigning a, a gender to a color has always been stupid. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, even before discourse around it. Like, I've always thought, like, pink looks cool. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's a color. Like, what a silly thing to, to, to gerrymander, you know? Um, I don't know. Our crew, our crew, this crew arrives too late. Uh, they only find traces of blood oil, the stuff that makes death yes. lock, lock li- <laughs> tick. tick. Um, and then we, we cut over to like the tallest building in this, in this landscape. And we see uh, what I thought was like, a, a, like a Wolverine wearing like a military uniform that had shorts on. But instead, it's just like really, really <laughs> tight pants. He's just got some really, yes, really tight pants. They're tucked pants. into his boots. Yeah, yeah. It's just, but I, I, yeah. for a minute, I thought he was wearing shorts, and I was like, "His, this is like a uniform shorts. Like, like you're on a uh, shorts." Wolverine is a, is a dark concept. Oof, it's not. It's not <laughs> good. Like short pants, Wolvie. Um, but he's arguing because uh, you know, he's saying something. He's saying like, "This is not the way that I remember things going down." So obviously, this is future Wolverine, and they've never had this experience. Um, and whoever he's talking to is like, oh yeah, this is Deathlock's uh, tachyon transmitter, just always whispering back and forth uh, to his past and future selves. Which that's just a cool thing in general. How are you making that's Deathlock cool. cool? How are you doing this, yeah. Rick Remender? You know, he's he's doing it. Like he he's the reason why this is happening. This is why our future is being fucked up. Uh, they're like, what does he want with the time travelers? Would he kill them? Frank Castle says, no. If if he wanted to kill them, he would have done it. You know, Wolverine says he will if push comes to shove. And this un- unseen speaker is saying it's not going to happen. You know, it will not come to shove. Uh, deliver them unharmed. And it shows that it's Betsy in the future. Business Betsy. Business Betsy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Shark Tank Betsy. <laughs> Shark Tank Psylocke. <laughs> Shark <laughs> Tank Psylocke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were watching yeah. um, Letterkenny the other day. And there's an episode mm-hmm. where they do a Shark Tank spinoff. Um, and I had the weird sensation. The first time I watched that episode was like, not a spinoff, but like a um, parody. The first time I'd watched it, I had never seen a single solitary second of Shark Tank. Uh, and then mm-hmm. the second time that I watched it, I was like, oh, this is the Shark Tank bit. And it made it drastically unfunny to me. Like, I was like, oh, oh. You, got, you guys went like super hard in this. And like, it's, it's funny. But like, I just didn't think it was anywhere near as funny or interesting as I did the first time. So. When it was just yeah, you had to think of it as a, a capital room parody. Yeah, I guess I so. leave. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the pants. Um, Deadpool or Death Deathlock gives them little uh, cicadas to put inside their ears. Yep. That'll uh, combat the crime surveillance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, basically saying like they they have been uh, the magistrate has a thought crime surveillance. Like our thoughts are literally being uh, thing, uh, being monitored. People keep saying like, what is going on to Thok? And he says, I have to show you. Yeah. Um, uh, we get a little time to like rest up where Eva kind of, you know, bandages Silex wounds and is trying to like encourage her. Um, like, you know, just basically saying like, Hey, are, are you okay? Uh, death Deadpool finds some water chestnuts that have been expired, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Uh, and Wolverine just mm-hmm. yells a whole lot. Um, and yeah, um, basically saying enough of this shit. Yeah. That's like keeps saying I have to show you. After I show you, I'll send you back. I have one of Kang's chrono cubes. Uh, go, go, Deathlock. Um, you know, uh, Eva is treating Psylocke, who has been very wounded uh, back in this, and is basically saying, like, listen, you know, uh, I knew Phantom X, and Phantom X did love you. Like, he, he came after you of his own volition. He was trying to save you. He valued you as much as, you know, he can value anyone. Yeah. You know, do not succumb to sorrow. Um, at this point we also get a a brief aside with nightcrawler and deadpool uh where deadpool uh basically is like 
you know, kind of kind of writing off all of this stuff because he's very much wounded. It's not healing. He's experiencing a lot of pain, which he doesn't want, which he doesn't normally do. And Nightcrawler is like, are you like, if you were like that, like, why did you go on this mission in the first place? And of course he makes a kind of a, a joke at first. And he's like, no, wait, it's because this was the closest thing to a family I've ever had. Like Deadpool getting a little bit serious. Yeah. This version of Deadpool is not pure wacky. You know, uh, Cable and uh, Castle, uh, Punisher, are hunting them down, uh, trying to find them while they're sneaking around on rooftops, you know, uh, and X-Force starts saying like, hey, this future, whoever we're actually hiding from, it doesn't look so bad. Yeah. Like, you know, this is an age of apocalypse. Like, this looks like um, Shutter Room. This looks like a cyberpunk city, yep. you know, up here, like the lights and everything. And Deathlock points out, no, this is totalitarian fascism Mm -hmm. you know this is precog shit uh you know people think about crimes and they die uh this is real bad i fight for true liberty i fight for love and forgiveness uh is what deathlock says which is very funny to be coming from a deathlock um across i love the the deathlock peace virus or whatever across the way we see uh one of these thought police dudes uh like literally just go into a house grab uh a guy uh, and throw him out of a window it looks like (laughs) or maybe stuffs him in a hover bike i can't actually tell from what's going on um but they and you know the the wife is begging like we have children please like you're you know he's he's not going to do anything wrong he's like oh he will and you know we we, x-force just saved your children's lives um is this like they obviously like this dude has a face uh and i got for the life of me they don't oh, that, sh- show him using that's a warpath that is warpath because they show a, him later yeah but i couldn't tell if it was the same dude they show i knew it was warpath later but i didn't know if it was here so yeah i'm pretty sure um yeah and and fucked up the idea this is you know uh this run rick remender is taking this to its logical conclusion like x-force was made to fight threats before they became the x-men to be active rather than reactive that was their whole remit if you take that to its, you know, its extreme, it's this, it's minority report. Yes. You know, uh, and that's, that's fucked up. Nobody likes that. Um, you know, uh, Wolverine says like, yeah, who, who's in charge of this? And they cut over to a gigantic billboard of, uh, Shark Tank Psylocke. Yeah. Um, looking, oh, looking pretty fascist. Uh, and of course this, yep. this is a shock for Psylocke, for our Psylocke who sees this and is like, oh my God. Um, and Deathlock explains, uh, through the use of, uh, and we, we see this through Deadpool's active imagination. Deathlock explains what happened. The, uh, the boy that they, they saved became the ultimate apocalypse and they had to X Wolverine had to assemble an X-Force, uh, to, to murder their opposition. Um, after which like they started murdering all of the criminals. And then once they killed every known criminal in the world, they started killing uh, criminals preemptively. And, you know, Deathlock is kind of challenging Wolverine in this. Like he's almost talking directly to Wolverine and Wolverine's like, I, this all sounds great. <laughs> this sounds this sounds exactly yeah. the reason that I, I did X Force, and that like slams him against the wall and said, you know, murder for any reason is still murder. And Wolverine has to respond. You know, sometimes murder is the price we pay to protect innocence. And and again, going back to just what you just said, like Remender trying to find not trying to find, but like really figuring like playing with that idea of like, is it worth it? Is it is is the cost? Is the yeah. ends? You know, does do they justify the means or not? Um, and yeah, and, and that's not like a, a a new concept in fiction or anything. I just think, in, or even a new concept of Wolverine. Like that's the concept of of Wolverine's character, right? Like way back in the the very beginning, him and Cyclops arguing, and Cyclops being no killing, and him being like, "Well, if I'd killed him, it would have prevented this." Yeah, that, that's the that's the antihero thing. It's just a really nice uh, kind of long look at it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, of and ultimately, like when we get to the end of the book it doesn't come down where you expect it to be, where it's like always bad. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, the end of this book has a precog killing that it, you know, Wolverine ends up going for, mm-hmm. you know, it still ends up being case by case. It still ends up being the world is slightly more complicated than this. Um, Wolverine says, you know, sometimes killing is necessary. I'm going to go kill. And Deathlock uh, says, well, I'm going to have to go back to my human host and save the world. The only way you understand, he puts a gun on Wolverine. Yep. 
Uh, he's going to shoot Wolverine. Uh, Deadpool attacks him, uh, um, or it looks like he tries to like prevent the shooting from happening. Um, we see when he shoots, we see the Banff, uh, but we can't in this panel. We can't see exactly what happened. Deadpool attacks Deathlock, and then um, from on high, the Nightcrawler has teleported Wolverine to uh, above Deathlock so that Wolverine can fucking kill this dude <laughs> uh which and it doesn't work like they they're trying to fight this dude eventually he gets wolverine down and he's about to use his Cree nebula staff to evaporate all flesh uh which i guess i don't know if that was a thing or if that was just a like oh we have to get rid of all the flesh so his healing factor won't work um just feel like I've that's never heard of it. V- very specific thing to call out here <laughs> for some reason so yeah the uh the idea being that will prevent this future uh, right before he's able to do it, though, uh, Punisher shoots him. Yeah. You know, uh, and he laments his failure. You know, I failed, failed myself because I turned to murder. And that means I deserve to die knowing that this world continues. Yep. Like I failed my mission. Rip death, death lock. And our, uh, our thought police meet up with our crew of heroes. Of course, we, now we've got two Deadpools. Uh, and as they are kind of just talking to one another and, and you know kind of figure out what's happening they realize that psylocke has left uh she she has run off uh and we get this thing where she's running across rooftops uh running along like guide wires uh, thinking like i have to put an end to this i have to kill my future self or let them send us home and potentially turn into this uh and i know we can't do that because we won't stop killing so there's only one one way to do this and it's um killing myself and she pulls out her swords and she commits seppuku. Um, yeah. AKA stabbing yourself she, in the she, stomach. She does the seppuku shuffle. The the comic, uh, the comic, uh, the next issue calls this seppuku, which is why I'm saying that. Otherwise, like, I kind of feel like this is probably an appropriation of the word seppuku. <laughs> if you're just stabbing yourself in the stomach in the future. Like, I don't know. seems like there's more rules for seppuku <laughs> than, than this. <laughs> I don't know that samurai were doing it to stop their future selves from becoming <laughs> totalitarian business magnates. Oh. <clears throat> you know, it it does feel like a misuse of the word, but it it's you know playing in in Silox Ninja. Yes, stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, she could also just be stabbing herself in the stomach, and we assume it's seppuku, or whoever says it was seppuku yes. assumes it's seppuku. Uh, Who knows? She collapses in front of the uh, statue of her future self, uh, begins to bleed out in some um, extremely cool art. We haven't really talked about the art specifically in this issue, and it's because Phil Noto is great, and you don't have to. He's just It's just yeah. really fun to read, and everything's easily understandable. And yeah, it looks really good. Yep. Yeah. And then we get this huge splash page for the next issue called Kill the Future. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Uh, so we cut over to that next issue, uh, number 29, really cool, uh, cover again, Wolverine, uh, and, uh, who's this in the lower left? It's got, it's, um, it's gotta be cable, right? Yeah. It's gotta be future cable. Mm-hmm. So old man, Wolverine cable and Punisher, just three old white guys, uh, tackling Psylocke out of a window. Yep. The, uh, looks really cool. Colors are great. As always. And we pick up uh, yeah. pretty much right on the heels of the last issue uh, with uh, Wolverine and um, Warpath uh, running through the halls of whatever their headquarters is uh, while a... T- old Wolverine. A, yeah, excuse me. Old Wolverine. Yeah. Um, where a time quake is starting to happen. Uh, and as they catch up to Magistrate Braddock, uh, they realize like she's glowing. She's doing the Back to the Future thing. If her old self kills herself, she's no lo- she no longer exists and it's going to destroy this entire universe. Yep. Uh, she's dying. They have to go find her and stop her from dying. You know, she has minutes left before she bleeds out. Find her Logan. Yep. Uh, we get this awesome page where she's lying and bleeding out, looking out on the world as it's, as it's like doing Dr. Strange shit. Yeah. You know, basically like shifting and turning and like buildings are dissolving into the sky. You know, really, really neat. You know, she's like, I'm dying. I'm taking this place with me. This was, was murder and fascism. You know, a methodology that I accepted because I joined Logan's Killers. I lost everything. You know, she's reflecting on the the series, like what she has done to sink herself to this. Yep. Uh, and stabbing herself further and further in the stomach uh, as this goes. Um, you know, and she says she says the title of the arc. This is one final execution. You know, executing herself. I love this um, idea that uh, Frank Castle, the future Punisher, comes up on his hover bike and is like, "You're under arrest <laughs> for killing yourself." It's, well, she she makes fun of it too. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, like it's it just like he's he's trying to stop her, and he's like, "Oh, my savior's the Punisher." Like you understand this is funny, right? 
uh, he says he's there to help, you know, uh, and she's just like really great. Like you can't save a target who wants to die. What are you going to do? Shoot me, <laughs> you know, and like runs and jumps off the, the cliff or jumps off the uh, building there. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, she jumps right into Cable um who is yeah. uh, who catches her and is you know they 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 have again this this conversation is like you know you're you you're you're saving that you're destroying this world where uh, no innocent ever suffers um and you know Betsy's like it's because you murder everyone that with thoughts that you don't like like who who will kill us for our murderous thoughts right like maybe maybe I am the maybe the reason I'm here is because I uh, I have to destroy this world um yeah. And of course Cable doesn't agree with this. Um and she eventually manages to escape by using her her stabby, her sci stabby, uh which is one of my favorite things that Psy like does. I've always thought that was super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 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 totality of her psychic powers, her psychic knife. Mm-hmm. You know, very cool. Uh she stabs him, she's gonna fall. She's like, This is, you know, I'm here to to punish and execute this world. You think she's gonna die, but Nightcrawler grabs him. Yeah. Uh there. And our Wolverine is like we have to save her she's dying uh future wolverine comes up and says give her give her to us we can save her yep you know how i you feel know. about her you know how i feel about her I, yeah exactly like i'm you from the future like i'm not gonna try to kill her i would uh you know. if i was wolverine i would never ever trust a future wolverine <laughs> not in a million years like no. my life in the last yeah. 30 years has changed dramatically <laughs> like i don't <laughs> i have no idea well, what's gonna go on imagine if you're a fucking wolverine like you've been apocalypse's horseman death <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> never i would never trust a future jeremy for that matter i don't think i would trust future anybody mm-hmm. like a single person that walked up to me was like i'm from the future i'd be like i am no i don't believe yeah. a word you say highly sus mm-hmm. yeah no, no 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 um she's still trying to kill herself you know as this happens and eventually uh they may they manage to stop her uh through future psylocke magistrate braddock yes stops her mm-hmm. With her psychic powers. And uh, they load her up into the Eva, and basically they're just, everyone's yelling, like, hold it together. We've got to get her better. Uh, we got to fix her. Uh, and Elizabeth passes out, and she wakes up in this, like, uh, place that looks like... X-Heaven? X-Heaven. Yeah, let's let's call it, like, hev- yeah. Heaven X, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Warren Worthington's there, and he's kind of talking like this is, this is actual heaven. Like, you're dead again so soon. You're not supposed to be here now. Um, and... He he almost like uh kind of reads her the riot act for committing suicide and was like that's not like you like you shouldn't have quit and of course she's just done she's like I can't carry this anymore like I'm not I don't I don't have anything else to give like I don't like I, I don't I don't I don't, I don't want to do this right <laughs> like I just don't want to do this anymore yeah you know uh he and he counters like. Yeah, but there are people who deserve death, but it's not you and Wolverine. You know, you have new lives waiting you. You have new loves waiting you. Yeah, the future, it, you know, you have blood on your hands, but it doesn't matter. You know, uh, the, you took this chance of fixing Apocalypse. It's maybe saved hundreds of millions of lives. And also, you like, know, how, uh, she, she says, how she's stuck by him, too, right? Like, I, you know, yeah. even though, like, you yeah. saw something in me that, that I needed to be saved, and you tried to save me until I could not possibly be saved anymore, um, which, yeah. is, which is powerful, which is a powerful thing to be able to do that. Yeah. Like, forgive yourself, basically, yeah. he's saying. You know, do, do all of this, uh, you know, this is too good to be true. Yes. You know, the, the, this scene. Uh, this heaven thing, because as we cut over to uh, from this heaven scene to uh, future Psylocke uh, has our Psylocke in a nutrient bath uh, and is calming her down yep. while she heals in the nutrient bath. Well, I know you don't yeah. I don't I know you don't care about Star Wars, but uh, that that book of Boba Fett, like almost every single episode, he gets like super injured. And it's like a real dramatic scene while he drags himself back into the bathtub to to get all healed again. And it's 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 hilarious. God, those nutrient it, baths. You got to have the fucking nutrient bath, man. I, I we got to get a house. With, I got to get a house with one of those. Oh, dude, so. Cause like right now, if I get hurt, <laughs> I just have to wait a few weeks. <laughs> Gary, Gary, the maintenance on those things are crazy. It's so expensive. On a nutrient bath? Worse than <laughs> yeah. you're not going to believe this. Worse than health care. <laughs> Hey, you don't have a nutrient bath guy as a homeowner? Nope. The, uh, I'm trying, um, my man. I'm trying. Uh, yeah. It's funny. Um, Psylocke, our Psylocke, is obviously very perturbed. She immediately accuses future Psylocke of of using Warren's image and her memories to be able to get her to uh, come back from from death, right? And and 
magistrate Braddock denies this saying, Oh no, don't worry. I, I still see him in my dreams too. Like it, a great love like that leaves a mark on a soul. Um, and, and, and Betsy is obviously just upset in general at this point, right? Like she's tried to commit suicide several times. She's been through the fucking ringer over the last 10 or 15 issues. Um, and she's not really willing to hear anything that this chick has to say. Yep. Uh, she's saying like, listen, you know, we've had this love. We both had it. We had it for Jean Philippe, but it, he would have corrupted us. Silox says, I love Warren. And she goes, Oh yeah, of course we loved him, but we both know that wasn't the same. Like, you know, that was old, you know, high school sweet star, sweetheart love, yeah. you know, as opposed to the brand new Phantom X love, you know, what we felt for, for Phantom X was you could feel it. It was chemical is in our cells, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that is why Brian and Jamie hated the man so much. Yep. Um, and yeah. she even looks at this cause he's looking at this from a perspective of the future, that kind of thing that I think about all of the time of, you know, even the bad shit that happened to me to get to me to, to get me to the spot was worth it because I liked where I am so much of like, fortunately the skinless man stole his heart. And Betsy is like, he sacrificed himself for us. He's like, yeah, but like, you'll get over that. Don't worry. <laughs> like it means a lot, but like you're, it's, the sting is going to be out of that before long. The benefit of time yeah. and distance. Which, is, which like future, future Psylocke is a villain in this, but also that is true. Yeah, absolutely. You mm-hmm. know, you get over stuff. I, I, me and uh, Liv have been rewatching the X-Files and I'm like, man, Mulder, lost his sister when he was 12 (laughs) like how is he not fucking over this (laughs) like you know i kind of understand like that you don't don't have closure like it's a mysterious thing yeah aliens and such but i was also just like man he's on the verge of tears every time it comes up so i don't it's a long time to be on an emotional tight wire like that i don't want to take away anybody's like personal trauma or or pain um, I have not lost a sibling before, so I have no idea what that what that feels like, or, or I don't know anything about it. But uh, Autumn and I were watching this dumb uh, dog show UK thing on HBO Max, which if you just need a happy place to go to, like go look for these uh, weirdo English people adopting dogs. It's very cute mm-hmm. and brilliant. Um, but one of the people came on, and she was like a therapist, and she she's one of the few people I've seen that are adopting a dog just by herself. She didn't bring a friend or a boyfriend or anything, and she starts talking about how she wants to adopt a foster dog that's been through a lot, that she could help, and all this other stuff. And she's like, because you know, and the show is framing this like it's going to be a real important reveal. She's like, because you know, I've I've been through a lot of tragedy in my life, and like this season, we've seen like people with cancer, like an eleven year old with a brain tumor that came out of it, like you know, a, a young boy who's worried about his deaf parents because what if they can't hear the fire alarm and he's very stressed out about it? Like th- those kind of like traumatic events. And then she's like, I lost my brother when I was a teenager. And like, there's a pause yeah. and I was like, I mean, Autumn are like looking at each other and I felt like the camera was looking at us too. <laughs> <I'm> like, and? <laughs> Is there, it, it's, yeah, did you, you kill you don't want to make light. Like, pe- yeah, pe- everyone handles grief differently. Yeah, Absolutely. Like re- recognize that completely. Like that's, you know, it's the most subjective thing. And I'm not saying like, Oh, like you don't have like a moral responsibility to get over it. I'm just always kind of surprised. Like, even if you don't get over anything, like you don't forget it, you know, like I, I lost my mom. I'm not over it, over it. I just don't every single day. I'm not thinking about yeah. it. It's not as fresh. You know, you, you cope. Like one of the great truths about life is that in the face of tragedy, you still have to wake up the next day you know, you're still you, you know, like I I have a real affection for like, you know, there's that speech in Chernobyl where, uh, the guys who are going off on, on animal patrol, uh, and he's talking about the first time he killed somebody in war. And he's like, I thought I would never come back from this, but I woke up the next day and I was still me. Yeah. I still had to be awake. I still had to like breathe and eat food and do all these things. Like that doesn't go away. You know, the, the, the human mind will do a lot to make it so we can operate. Yeah. Absolutely, you know it's um it's just uh, it's just and, very yeah. it's just very funny that she was like my my brother died and I'm like, I mean you could just not tell people that you could just tell people that you want a dog like I don't know I don't it, it's such a weird yeah. thing to and it didn't bother me at all I just expected it was, it was the TV show built it up to a point where I thought it was going to be a huge tragic event and not something that's happened to zillions of people across the world like they who have lost a sibling in their life so. In an American show, that it would have to be, uh, they would really egg them on. Yeah, to say that. absolutely. But you yeah. expect better of a British show, which is why I watch British reality television. Yeah. Yeah. I had the I had the unfortunate uh, time of someone send me a uh, a TikTok video of Milf Island. Um, oh, sure. Did you know that the Do you know the premise of that show? Because it's not just that the milfs are on an island; it's that they bring all their sons with them. Did you know that? 
Oh, did you? Did you? You didn't? <laughs> nope. you, I didn't know this either. Yeah, there's all of the milf sons are there trying to oh. bang the other milfs. Like it's a horror fucking show, dude. Like it is. The oh. sons are trying to date the other milfs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. No. One dude. So like it's a fi- it's a mother son thing where like theoretically they could both get laid and then like give each other high fives. Yes. Absolutely. No. There's like there's like camera footage of like, you know, him saying like, oh, you know, mom likes to leave the girls out, like, like referring to his mother's breast, like that kind of stuff, dude. It is horrible. It is just, and one dude, the video that someone sent me, and I'm telling you this because it's so fucking horrible, and I'm sorry, everybody that has to experience this, <laughs> but not really because I need to share this pain. Um, this kid was like talking about one of the cast members, and she's so beautiful. There's something about her. There's this animal magnetism. You know, she has the beautiful feet, and I'm like, uh oh. She's like, she has, you know, she, I just want to pamper her uh. and massage her. I just want to paint her toenails, and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I just, I, I, <laughs> it's, 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 something's bad about something in, bad yeah. is about to happen and then sure enough he's like and then i would suck the acrylic off them toes and i'm like what oh no <laughs> and then it, no. and then it cuts to him sitting next to his friend or i guess one of the other sons maybe not his friend to be like dude we can't be vanilla these are some experienced milfs and i'm like i've got to get out the fuck out of here i got this <laughs> fuck this <laughs> these are some experienced milfs <laughs> oh no it's milf force it's milf force we gotta get out of here <laughs> The uncanny X milfs. Let's go. Oh God! <laughs> Fuck Suck man. the acrylic off the Ugh. toes, Gary. I, I worship the ground she walks on, especially the walking. Part. <laughs> Just, I, I had no idea that the sons were there. I fucking hate that. <laughs> I, like, I, I assume maybe there'd be one son there, and they had their pick of the milfs. I mean, look, I don't, I didn't. This is the only like video footage of the show that I have seen, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that every milf brought a son, and then all of the sons are trying to bank all of the milfs. That's the idea that I got from the very short clip that I saw. Milf Krakoa, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my god, I don't like any oh of it. Oh god, dude, it's, it's bad. I uh, back in the comments <laughs> where they're where they're not uh, sucking toes, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah, the not no toes get sucked. Uh, future Psylocke is saying like, listen, over the years, you transform into me. You know, the world is perfect because of what I've done. Uh, Psylocke says, you, you can't convince me of that. And she's like, I already did, or we wouldn't be here. Yeah. You know, all you'd have to do is decide like change and this whole future would, would change, but you are on the path to me. Yeah. Um, you know, really, really power move downstairs. Like you know? the, the, the thought police crew and the X-Force crew are like, we are like, they're telling the X-Force crew, like, we can't tell you anything. We need to get you the fuck out of here because you can't know. You've already learned too much, and it could jeopardize the future. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it just it's not a good thing. Is this That is Hank Pym, right? Pym's just hanging out. <laughs> Hank Pym yeah, is yeah. just here. Yeah, man's hanging Perfect. out. Perfect. This is great. Yeah. Fantastic. He's the one who said it was a time quake, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, Frank Castle starts saying, like, listen, you know, you got to do some stuff when you go back in time, though. Kill Kid Apocalypse. Kill Logan's kid as well. You know, if you find Archangel, you kill him. Uh, and basically, uh, Ant-Man has to stop him. Well, it's like, well, he uh, says, you go this. find the son of Archangel. And you're like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. What the fuck is that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I For some reason, I my brain skimmed over that. And I thought it was like that son of a bitch Archangel. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Was what he was saying. Not the Arch- Archangel's son. That's interesting. I mm-hmm. uh, missed that bit. Uh, Deadpool um, reacts to this like Deadpool does with jokes. And it's like, yeah, you know... D- d- you're telling us to do all this stuff. Like you're so grumpy. Like you're su- you're such a super grumpy dude. Like who are you? Like you're just some boring two dimensional self serious relic from the seventies. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> he had dirty hair. He wants his whole everything. And back. Castle draws down on him, and Deadpool's like, "What are you gonna do? Shoot me? Like if you shoot me, all of this is gone. Like don't you have to? Don't don't don't, you, don't I have to survive? <laughs> and I love, I love like Frank being like, "Is he important to the story? Like can we get away with killing?" Him? <laughs> yeah, it's very cute. <clears throat> Um, the, the fun little comic bit here, you know, uh, the, uh, he's talking about, uh, oh, like, yeah, I bet you I play a big role in that and in the Cola Wars and they call it, like, we haven't had soda in my world for years. <laughs> uh, just like, Jesus Christ, man. Dial <laughs> like, it down. Very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, then he's like, what if I killed him? He's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. You know, can't do it. Uh, really cute. Cute little bit in this serious thing. They're going to send him back uh, a really cool bit here. Wolverine says, listen, I'm going to send you back with one thing, whisper something in his ear and we don't get to hear yeah. it, but we're going to find out later what this is. Um, they let, they um, load up on the top machine, zap home. And then um, surprise, 
uh, Wolverine and Psylocke start doing some some making out, and uh, Wolverine wonders, like, do you think he'll do it? And Psylocke says, our future Psylocke says, you know, we'll see, we're, we are still here, right? So, like, he's got it. Yep. This is the version of Psylocke that goes for Wolverine. Yep. You know? Uh, and our final issue we cover today, uh, number 30, here we got a cover of Genesis looking up in the clouds and seeing the Lion King's dad, but it's Shadow King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with his big shooting grin in the clouds. The Lion King's dad. Did he have a name? I've, I've, it's been so long since I've seen the Lion King. Mustafa? Is it Mustafa? Okay. Or Mufa- Mufasa? Mustafa or Fafa? Mu- Mufafa or Mustafa? I don't know. We're, not sure. I, uh, Mus- my little sister yeah, was, uh, was sure. a Little Mermaid girl, so I watched that movie a million times. I don't, I don't know much about the Lion King. I've only seen the Lion King once mm-hmm. when I was like 13. Okay. <laughs> like when it came out, I watched it because I think my... Uh, my dad's girlfriend's daughter watched it, but I was a little bit. Yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, like when. Uh, I mean, that's the only reason I watched all these Disney movies was because of siblings. Just watched, watched. It was also the last one I watched. But, you know, I, I guess Toy Story, but then out of that, uh, that crew, it was like, you know, a lot of people. Like I didn't watch Mulan. Nope. I didn't watch Emperor's New Groove. Uh, any of those I will. Kind of I will go to bed. Emperor's New Groove is legit funny. <laughs> like it's, it's like, I, and I I'm sure people have that, told like, you when that. I was like 30 or something, and and I I did laugh at it, but I don't remember anything about it. I think it was just a surprise that yeah. it was like that kind of humor. There's an interesting like th- there's c- cool history to that thing about it almost barely getting made and having to be redone and all this other kind of stuff too. Um, it's it's it, it, oh, it is a weird like outlier of the Disney um run or whatever. Uh, but yeah, like I I I haven't kept up with any of that stuff. I don't never watch the live action anything. I'm never going to. Just don't need the don't see the desire to do it. Um, yeah, not a Disney adult. Uh, no, not a, not yeah. at all. Not not yeah. at least. You, you guys have fun. Adult I think you're Disney weird. Or whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. Uh, so we're getting, we're getting into this. This is a uh, weirdly like it's chapter six, but it's about the halfway mm-hmm. point of this. This is an epic year long end for this run. Yep. And uh, right. we start out in the ball field where uh, Genesis thinks he was raised at on this like kind of typical Kansas setting. Uh, Superman's, Superman's origin, origin story yeah. as uh, somebody that looks like Phantom X in overalls is playing baseball. And they're just throwing the old ball around and teaching some lessons, um, saying that, you know, basically talking about Apocalypse and how he was chosen by the Celestials to become Apocalypse to, you know, basically force the world's evolution. Uh, but that was, you know, prevented by the X-Men. Uh, and when the X-Men, when Wolverine found out that Apocalypse was going to be reborn as a child, he had that, he had the, the boy murdered and, you know, Genesis not realizing that this was all about him just yet. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's freaked out. He chases uncle cluster into the house where his parents are Superman's parents, uh, are there. Uh, and, uh, he says, I'm going to get him cleaned up for dinner. Really great, uh, image here takes him to the bathroom and, and uh, Genesis looking in the mirror. He's like, why did no one tell me this before? And uncle cluster, we see in the reflection, it's actually uh, uh, the shadow mm-hmm. King. He's like, because uncle cluster was the one who shot yeah. you. And when Genesis is looking in the mirror, he's seeing uh, his apocalypse self. Yeah. So he's like, why, why, uh, cool. Really cool. Why panel. did I cut off all my hair and put those tattoos on my skull? Is what he's thinking in that. Panel. Yeah, yeah, I look like shit. Is there anything I can do about this dumb lip thing? <laughs> I, I just, it makes me look stupid every is there, panel. Is there a mutant I, whose mutant power is just not this? <laughs> this is the absence of this. Yeah, like, <laughs> I would like to talk like, to them, please. Yeah, it looks awful. Um, Genesis you know. wakes up and in reality, or as, Wolver- or as excuse me, Sabretooth says, uh, as, as sure as you can be, it's reality with a bunch of telepaths around. Uh, he is in the back of an RV uh, with the Shadow King pouring some champagne and smiling all creepy because that's the Shadow King's vibe. Uh, while mm-hmm. uh, Doc and Durkin Dakin is driving and Sabretooth is eating popcorn in the passenger seat and they are headed towards Kansas. Yep. Yeah. You know, we're your friends. We're going to tell you the truth, uh, Evan. Mm-hmm. There's going to be in a couple of issues of him being mentally tortured, yes. like them just absolutely putting him through shit. Uh, we skip back over to yeah. the the Jean Grey school for uh, little Wolverines, I guess is probably the best way to yep. talk, describe that. Where yeah. like you know, Kitty and and Hank are both like, where the fuck is the headmaster of this school? Like he just left us here. He dropped. You haven't seen him for Child years. Apocalypse off, yeah. and he disappeared. Nobody knows where he's at. Uh, and you know, and Kitty's kind of rightfully thinking like the Brotherhood of Evil is reformed, and Hank's like, oh, I don't know if it's that. And she's like, No, I kind of get a vibe. I'm, this is this is definitely happening. Beast gets such a shitty uh, 
straw in this series because all he does is hang around and go, God damn it, Wolverine. Yep. But like every issue, you know, he just complains about everybody. Um, we cut over to the villain's base where they're playing pool, yeah. which I think is very mm-hmm. funny. Like, of course, they have to have rec time, you know, uh, and they have uh, Phantom X railroad spike to the wall his corpse like he is a uh, a statue like bleeding i out. like this because it's very reminiscent of um how uh, angel originally lost his wings and became archangel and i don't I'm, oh, and yeah. I'm, i don't know if that's like a direct it feels like it would be a reference at this point right like it feels like it would be um, something that they would reference um even indirectly uh and this is just them going like wolverine's gone no trace of his genetic material exists on earth um, Nightcrawler couldn't have gotten them out, so we we definitely, almost definitely killed these X Men that we were looking for. Um, and you know, Skin Man, Skinless Man is like, hey, look, Phantom X is dead. I'm good. <laughs> and, and Mystique is like, yeah. but you're, that's kind of small time. Like if you think about it, if we use this correctly, we could control everything. We could do whatever we want to. Yeah, this extraordinary crew of Wolverine enemies could do could do anything they want mm-hmm. to. You know, and they're like. Where are Shadow King and Dakin Dokken and Sabretooth? You know, uh, the, even, the, even this perfect shot we're taking might have consequences. We cut over to them. Again, basically torturing Evan. Uh, Shadow King has turned off his powers. You know, he's like, I'm, I'm as good as Xavier. I can stop you from doing this. Um, the, he's saying, you know, what are you doing to me? Where are we going? You know, you guys are just villains who kidnapped me for a road trip. You know? Uh, and they're playing with them. They're being shitheads. They Dakin for all the world looks like Anthony Kiedis in this. I hate it. Uh, it's exactly that kind of fucking scumbag. <laughs> like, doesn't he? Uh, do not like uh, it. that makes that makes Sabretooth um, flee in this in this little relationship. And I'm I'm kind of here for flee the Sabretooth or Sabretooth, aka flee, the, aka flee. The um, he's basically they're just saying like, listen, you know. The difference between why are they heroes and we're villains is an arbitrary line. Mm-hmm. Everyone sees their enemy as a villain. We're going to show you the truth of this, like that it is, it is fake. Uh, they stop at a gas real station. Real quick. But, but, and he says, real quick, before we move on, I just want to point out that Dakin, Doc, and Darkin is eating uh, cheese puffs with his claws. Um, yep. and it, which seems like it would be much more sanitary that, it's a than hack. using your fingers, except that goes inside of his body. And I just, we, we, we've talked about that a lot in the past with like Wolverine cutting that turkey in the, in the animated series yep. and all that stuff. And like, you're just putting that, you're just put it in the worst parts of your body. <clears throat> Dude. Well, and with Dakin uh, it's bone. Yeah. He doesn't have adamantium yeah. claws. So his bone is straight up fucking touching a, a cheese puff, like a, a Cheeto. Yeah. I don't, I, I never want my bones to touch a Cheeto. <laughs> if there's one thing. You know, something has gone seriously wrong if my bones get exposed if to If there's Cheetos. two things in this world that I don't I want, it's an ex-wife and it's my bones touching Cheetos. Yeah. Those are my two things that I don't <laughs> want to have. <laughs> it's fucking terrifying. Uh, so Anthony Kiedis and crew get to this gas station and he's like, listen, Evan, uh, Sabretooth's going to go in there and kill everybody, but you can kill him first. Would you do that? And he's like, you know, here, I, I'd find another way. And he's like, here's the thing. Uh, you have to kill him. It's not going to work. You know, Shadow King is going to give you your power back. Go kill Sabretooth or he's going to kill every single person in this gas station, all these innocent people. Basically setting up the same thing, the logic that happened to them killing yeah. him, mm-hmm. killing, uh, you know, uh, killing Young Apocalypse. And and he does um, it. Like, he he goes in and as uh, Sabretooth is about to start killing somebody, he blasts Sabretooth and, like, shit is going, like, glass is breaking and all of these people are trying to flee. And, of course, as this woman is trying to flee past Sabretooth, he just reaches out and absolutely guts her. Uh, yeah, because he held back. He didn't kill Sabretooth. He just stunned exactly. him. You know, or something just zapped him. He's like, yeah, you, you, you pulled your punch. So this woman dies, you know, uh, and he kills her. Uh, she, they're trying to get him mad enough to take that step. You know, this idea here is like, once you start killing that, it makes it super easy. And as they go outside, like we see that like Doc and Doc and Dirk and Deacon has also been uh, pretty busy murdering the people that were escaping and turning on the gas from one of the pumps so that they can blow this place up. Um, and yeah, everybody in that place is now dead. Yep. It says, basically, this is what we're doing on this road trip. We're going to go past a bunch of people. We're going to kill a lot of them unless you stop us by killing us. Mm-hmm. You know, 
uh, some saw torture shit. And um, they they, like, they spend a little time saying like you know talking about killers, talking about um, you know how their his dads Phantom X and Wolverine who've tried to teach him this honorable path are complete hypocrites. Um, and you know Genesis says those those aren't my parents, and he's like, oh yeah, your parents next our next stop. Uh, and Genesis realizes that they're headed towards Uncle Cluster's farm. Uh, so he karate chops the Shadow King and jumps out of the RV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. St- stabs him in the neck, jumps out of the RV, runs into the house. You know, mom, dad, you have to get out of here. But uh, Dakin, Dakin, Dukin, and Anthony Sabretooth have already got there and killed his parents. Yes. You know, and basically, like, you could have prevented yep. this. This is on you. You know, preemptive killing is the way it rocks. And he explodes. He uses his eye beams to like completely blow up the pa- the back of the house, mm-hmm. sending you know Sabretooth and and Deacon Dark and Darken in there. Uh, and then this is when we, I think the first time we've seen him use his shape shifting powers at this point. I don't know if he's been has, if he's been using mm-hmm. them in the Wolverine series, but at this point, this is the first time we've seen them uh, making these huge fists and starting to pummel the both of them. Yep, uh, they're fighting him back. They're trying to slash him, like, you know, show me what you have. Like, you know, my my father hasn't done anything for me. He gave you so much more. Like, show me. Show me that you can kill me. You know, again, trying to taunt him. Uh, he says, okay, I'm going to show you my power. I'm going to make you suffer. He grabs them. He's about to kill them uh, and then thinks better of yep. it. Like, I am not going to do, I'm not going to be like you. And he, and you know, uh, Dokken is like, good self-control and now it's time for some good news and some bad news the good news is you we didn't kill your parents and the bad news is they never existed in the first place and we see like as they're standing yeah. in this cornfield we see the the looming face of shadow king uh which uh tells us that all of this is just happening in his mind uh, just like they told us at the beginning of the issue like reality can you can only trust reality so much when you have a bunch of telepaths running around so yeah and the uh yeah, this is going to be the next little turning of the screw, mm-hmm. turning of the knife to try to get him to uh, to change. Uh, and that's going to be in the next episode of this podcast. Yeah. Uh, how good is the series, Gary? <laughs> like we talked about it. It's Real just good. really fucking good. Yeah. Like it's just so much fun. It's just a, a blast to to move through. And I'm so excited. I might just go ahead and finish this. Uh, I've been I've been reading that like post Hoxpox X-Men series and it's it's a lot of fun, but I'm I'm really into this right now. So. It's uh, one of the things I really love about it is that it's uh, in conversation with past X Men stuff, but it still feels kind of self contained. Yeah. You know, it's setting up important stuff, but it's not, it doesn't have like, a, a, you know, this is going to set up the the new status quo. You know, it doesn't feel like it's trying to sell me on uh, a world changing, you know, Avengers vs. X Men event. Mm-hmm. Like, important shit's happening, but it's still manageable scale important. Yep. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's important for the characters, right? Like it doesn't like, it's, it's much more focused on how this is going to like, how the characters are going to deal with some of this stuff as opposed to like the whole Marvel universe has been turned upside down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which I, you know, appreciate that. Um, if you like this show, head on over to patreon.com slash duck feed TV, uh, give us some dollars, five bucks a month gives you a bunch of bonus shows, uh, New episodes of shows you can already get, all kinds of stuff. Ten dollars a month gets you even more, um, and uh, you're supporting us, and it, that's and that's great. good. We, appreciate we super it. appreciate it. You can also leave us ratings and reviews on Apple Podcast or Google Podcast or Amazon Podcast or Facebook Podcast or I don't know, man. I don't know who, who did, like fucking Walmart Podcast. That's probably a thing by now. Who even knows where all the podcasts go? You know, I don't. Uh, I don't care. Right next, right, right uh, next to all the cowboys where, you can that, review, that do it. where have all the podcasts yeah. gone? Yeah, what if God was one of us? <laughs> um, do all that I'd stuff. Really like and then, to uh, tell your friends. Most importantly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> tell your friends. Uh, listen to this podcast. That's that's the best thing you can do. And we love you. Bye. <laughs>